Thanks for having me here. I want to go back to basics. In the beginning, there was a story. Somebody had something to share. Later, much later, there was literature as a discipline. It was not the other way around. The same applies to all other disciplines. First, we started exchanging goods and services, and then much later, there was business as a discipline. Disciplines are means to an end. They're not an end in themselves. And don't get me wrong, I'm not against specialization. I think it's necessary and fantastic. But what it does is that it tends to squeeze reality into small tubes that lose context. A snapshot of our planet is screaming for different ways of doing things. We all want a better world, a world rid of poverty, human trafficking, um, um, <laughs> tragic wars, and so on and so forth. We just don't know how to get there. So here's big-headed me with the idea of borderlessness. What I want to do is to shift the center of gravity in the ways in which we do things. The ways in which we approach each other and the world we live in. For a very long time, we have divided groups of people. We have created borders between human beings and the rest of nature. And we have created a distinction between what is tangible and what isn't. Uh, one of the things that uh, we also need to do is to break down the borders um, that we have created mentally, spiritually, and physically. We need to transcend these borders. We need to face them, and we need to challenge them. In order to perceive intu intuitively, in order to see the context and the big picture. You know, it's funny, we've even uh, created borders between the organs inside our body. Um, dismantling the holistic function of the body and being. Um, borderlessness is also something that has to do with the process, and this is where creativity and borderlessness unite. There's a lot of talk and effort in combining arts and business, in combining arts and science, in order to fuel innovation and creativity. This is all great, and it's, and it's a good thing, but I sometimes worry and wonder if, in the ways in which we're doing this, if we are maintaining the borders that exist between these disciplines, instead of embracing the dynamics of creativity. Uh, it also kind of assumes that artists own creative thinking. They don't. Uh, you can be an artist and not so creative or innovative, and you can be a mathematician and be extremely creative and innovative. This could be the veins in our hearts. It could also be the logic of our being. This is a picture taken from a de design book called Massive Chains, and it describes the communication on the internet during one day. And this was done a while ago. To me, this image describes the world we live in. We live in a world of rapid changes and information overflow, both good and bad. This is a world that requires us to take on the dynamics of creativity. And the most important asset that anyone can possess in that kind of a world is a strong inner compass, strong intuition, and self-knowledge. This requires us to see things holistically. And we need to be able to have the courage to trust our gut feelings in order to go into the unknown. We must dare the future. If we are to continue to pursue our goals by relying on calculations and, and uh, future forecasts about things are going to turn out, we're not being very creative or innovative. It goes, it goes without saying. Recently, I had the chance to listen to one of our world global leaders talk about the challenges of our times. 
he said that um, the issues that we are facing right now are so complex and they're so huge. And because we are so interdependent, it requires us to approach these issues holistically. Very differently from the ways in which we've done, and we need to show compassion. He also said things like, we need to tap into the resources of empathy on a collective scale. By that time, I was almost crying. I was so inspired. He also said that heads of states, world leaders like myself, have been found guilty of resorting to technical solutions when faced with these big challenges. And he said, we have to change that. After his talk, he opened up for questions, and there were about 10 questions in the audience. Every single one of them, he answered technically. I think we're all a bit like that. We're all raised up in the same system of thought. We all want a better world. We just don't seem to know, know how to get there. There's a question from the audience that I want to share with you. And he was asked, what if we exchange the word growth, referring to economic growth, with the word balance? And he said, oh yes, this is such an important question. This is exactly what we need to be doing. But you know, the issues that we're dealing with are really urgent. And we, do, we just can't do that right now. It has to wait till later. When I was head of UNIFEM, or UN Women, two years after the war in Kosovo, we were often confronted with the same answers. The women wanted to be part of the reconstruction process. Of course they did. They're half of the population and the solution. But many of the decision makers tried to convince them that, you know, you women are really important, and the gender issues as well, but you know, you have to wait. There are more important things we need to deal with, such as the independence of Kosovo or the legal reconstruction in the country. Complete lack of context. To me, this shows complete lack of context. There's no sense of roots. And in a way, uh, you know, I wonder if the same is happening with the idea of creativity today. In our formal canals of education, governance, and corporate culture, do we consider creativity as a soft issue disconnected from the real stuff. Because if we do, it's sort of like baking a cake and adding the flour, chocolate, and eggs afterwards. You wouldn't do that. I hope you, I hope you wouldn't do that. <laughs> um, borderlessness allows us to see the context, the whole context of things, the big picture. It reminds us that we're all part of the same puzzle. It creates a link between the conscious and the unconscious. It creates the link between uh, the visible and the invisible, uh, the non-existent and the existent. And in doing so, it creates endless opportunities. It also enables us to see the leaves on the tree. It enables us to see the branches of the tree. It enables us to see the bark of the tree and the tree as it stands in front of us. But it also enables us to go beneath the surface of the earth, into where the roots are, to observe how Mother Earth nourishes the roots of the tree. We can observe its ecosystem, its own universe. In prehistoric times, the color of black was the color of creativity. Elvis Costello, in one of his wonderful songs, he sings about darkness, and he says, darkness, it scares you reckless, but in time, you'll see things clear and stark. This is what I hope borderlessness can do for us. Thank you. <laughs>